Hey everybody, back with another video. Picked this Big Buck Hunter. I think Big uh, well, you can't really see the terrible reflection. Something World, Big Buck Hunter World. Um, picked this up for somebody else, actually. I I think it'd be fun to play this game, but <laughs> I'm shooting games don't usually last long in the basement anyway. But I picked this up for a friend and I think I'm going to need to do some work. I had a, some small monitor issues, but I just um, got it home, and I wasn't even planning to do a video, but powered it on, and it needs work. I don't know what's wrong with it. It seemed to be working when I picked it up, but now it, it's not working. So let me power it on and show you what we're button. doing. And the first thing I notice is when I turn the power on, the PC is not turning on, which that seems weird. I mean, shouldn't the PC turn on automatically? But maybe that's a setting in the BIOS, so it could have a BIOS issue there. Not sure. Um, let's see what else is going on here. It looks like there's an empty VGA cable here, but I traced that, and it looks like they just ran an extra temporary VGA cable from the monitor over to this like JAMA interface board thing. I've never worked on one of these before at all. So I have no idea like how the guns get connected. I'm trying to look at it right now. Okay, those are the gun connections down here, right there. So the, that's working. Does that board have power? Oh, uh, th th that board probably gets powered from the PC, which is not turned on which is uh, from this connector here. I'm just guessing, I have no idea. So let's go and see what we have on the screen. Nothing on the screen. Now you see a big reflection. So look in here and if, hopefully you can see it. Let me come back with my little light on. So I think uh, that's the power. Okay, there's the power button. All right, we got the PC powering up. All right, now we're getting something. So we're getting something on the screen, but it's completely jacked up. We got some type of weirdness going on down below. I don't know if that too, hopefully that comes off. Okay, yeah, good. I was worried about the tube being scratched. Um, some a little bit of discoloration up here on this side, but there's definitely something going on on the bottom and You can't really see it. It's like light up here and dark down here I would think that that's either a capacitor or a transistor or some type of issue on the board itself. Oh, it kind of cleared up a little bit. It says system is in safe mode um, F8 to enable system boot F9 to select booting device, F1 to continue or delete. So I actually don't have a keyboard hooked up to it. Should I go hook up a keyboard real quick? Maybe, I, maybe I'll hook up a keyboard real quick. Let me do that. I was gonna pull the whole computer out, but let's see how far we can get. All right, I have a keyboard here hooked up. Let's see, we're gonna hit escape, I guess. Oh, that didn't work. Let me uh, see if I can reboot the computer. All right, now I got a keyboard in there. Check some error. Something disks f fail or something, I don't know. Delete. Where's my delete key? A little bit of discoloration. There's something weird going on with the monitor for sure. Standard CMOS settings. We got a CMOS battery issue at a minimum.
channel zero div huh is it not recognizing it says it has a the drive there f8 f1 to continue okay I don't know what's going on. Okay, it's loading Linux now, so I just hit... There we go. There we go! So we, we definitely... So it seems like it's working. We just definitely have a... Um, a BIOS CPU issue or something like that. That's good news. And we also have a monitor... Something going on with the monitor. As you can see right there, it's like... Some dark, dark areas of the screen or something, which is wacky. If you guys can see that. Let's see if I can. It's down here. Alright, it's still booting up. It's, uh, I should have filmed the whole thing, but it's taking a while. It says... Machine is undergoing maintenance. It kind of booted up and had a little X in the middle of the screen. And I just used some WD-40 to get that. Uh, I'll clean it with some uh, some Windex here in a second. But uh, that got the WD-40 just got rid of the goo that was sitting on there. But making progress. Still going to have to power down the PC and clean it all out and put a new, um, what do you call it, coin cell battery in it but be back when this thing finally boots up obviously you can see it looks weird it's like there's some there's definitely discoloration or something going around All right, it says put 50 cents in let's see what we get here uh, let's see Those lights light up. Probably put the keyboard down. Oh. Welcome to Big Buck Hunter Pro Open Season. Oh, howdy, it's Looks like it's working. There's a little delay, but I have no idea how this thing's supposed to work. Let's go hunting. Huh. I only have one hand right now, so. Welcome to Antelope Adventure. Shoot the bucks, don't shoot the those, okay? Pick a spot. Whoops. Oh, what? hit the damn wrong thing right off the go. That's hilarious. Oh, guys. You could hit the front side of a barn. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, that was probably for player one. Oh, damn it. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, it's working. Let me let me uh, you side that rifle? see what I'm doing next. All right, I took the marquee off, and it's uh, you can tell it's kind of sliced or broken a little bit. I'll try taping that up, but these things get 
fragile anyway from the heat, I think. <clears throat> so I'll try taping it up. Uh, might need to order another one or something like that or try to grab one. Yeah, this is Big Buck World. As you can see right there, see the little crease where it's broken up a little bit. And it has no fluorescent light, so I need to get a flat, the light in there. Actually, I know why there's no light in there. It's because the part where you put the um, starter is stuck all the way in there. So I'm going to have to take this all the way off anyway to get to the monitor. And you can see actually right here, there's a little bit of gap like it's separated from... But is that on purpose? I'm not sure. I don't know why that is like that, but I'm going to take that off and try to fix that as well. Okay, so I, I have I blew this out the uh, PC. I took it out, brought it down to the uh, workshop area, and I don't know what kind of motherboard is, is it. BioStar N six eight five plus or something. I don't know what kind of processor it is or anything. Just one memory stick. Let's see if we can see in there. There we go. That's hard for me to read through. One gig. One gig of memory, I think. <clears throat> so yeah, not much to this board, really, to the whole setup. It does look like something was done. Maybe this wasn't original or something. Look at this these wires right here. I'm probably going to heat shrink these um, and make it permanent. So... This could be a replacement power supply, most likely, or something. I don't know why they did that. Or is that to keep it on all the time? Hmm. All right, so I'm going to have to investigate that. So it's always good to take these things apart. It's a little bit dirty right there where the f there's no fan there, but I guess there could have been a fan or an extra fan. There's a fan right there. I might take that out, that plastic part out, and clean it. Um, and then I also have the battery removed. So let's go ahead and test the battery. It's got a hard drive, a DVD-ROM. I don't know if there's a memory stick in there. Hmm. Looks like there is some... This is kind of interesting. It's like a... Epo not pox epoxy, but it's plastic. And there's like some type of chip in there. Which is kind of weird. I'm going to have to investigate that a little bit. That obviously was supposed to be sticking to the side right here. Somehow. So, maybe they replaced this power supply. Alright, I'm going to do some investigating on what these connectors might be for. Maybe an extra fan or something. I don't right, know. Real quick, I'm just going to test the battery that I removed. So you can see how dead it is. There's my negative, there's my positive, 0.17 volts. So that's definitely dead, dead, dead. And I'm gonna open this up and we'll test this All one. All right, here's the new battery. 3.2, almost 3.3. So we're gonna stick that in here. All right, I'm pretty sure because this is ground on. I have to look up the uh, PC, whatever type of ATCA or whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, um, power connector that is. This is probably to turn it on. So maybe it was grounded. As you, if you can see there, they didn't quite cut this wire all together. This one they did. I'm not sure what's going on there. The other thing is these probably, I think, 5 volts and. Um, ground are just hanging loose which isn't ideal i don't know if this was supposed to be connected to anything this uh, purple and black here right here and just to zoom up real close you can see what that chip is and it's upside down
Tyco something or another on the back. There we go. Just to record that, I don't know what that contraption is, so I'm going to power it on with the new connector and we'll look see what it looks like on a computer monitor. All right, we have it somewhat powered up here. Okay, let's see. Whoop, it just, something happened. <laughs> I don't know if I have the keyboard plugged in right or the mouse plugged in. Let me see. might restart it well we know that that's definitely a monitor issue because it looks good on here on the screen all right I had to reboot it to get it in to CMOS so let's say standard CMOS we're gonna set today's date which is April something April 3rd Plus or minus. There we go. April third, Let's do um, a twenty four. All right, got IDE. Okay, drive a. I don't think there's a floppy in this thing. And halt on all the keyboard. All right. Escape. I don't know what the bio settings should be. I think there's something on Claw where they review this. I'm just going to leave it like it is. ACPI function, interesting. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I have to look that up. Is this the power on? Power on. Uh, password, power on password, hotkey, move mouse, any key, button only. <clears> hmm. <throat> power on after power fail. I think we want this to be on. Alright. Power on by alarm. USB. Uh, okay. Okay. Hmm, shut down on temperature. Seems like a good thing to have, but I'll leave it alone for now. Show hardware monitor and post. 
sure, I guess so. I'll have to look to see what, I might come back to this after I look at what the uh, bio settings are. Alright. I don't have the dongles in, but let's see what it does. Just so you can see it, kind of. Uh, it does flash a little hardware monitor information. Boom. That was pretty quick. Loading, please wait. I'll pause and come back when, when there's something. Yeah, so it says connect I.O. board. So it knows that the I.O. board's not connected to that uh, serial, the serial port. So I, I would have to connect that and probably have it powered, I imagine. Um, do I want to do that down here? Maybe. Have to see. Okay. I'll come back and see. All right, I'm taking things apart here real quick. I couldn't get this DVD drive to open, so I had to manually open it. There's no disc in it. Um, I will put that back. Little stink bug found its way into this thing. So I took, that, took this uh, case off. I'm going to obviously get that stink bug out of there. The other thing is this green wire is just to like a little LED. So it's just for looks. This little green wire that comes into here. And then this is probably some type of over voltage protection, I assume. Um, I don't know what the purple and black wire is for. Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Maybe it's, there's no need for it. And it's obviously downstream of the regular computer power supply. So it, it is protected voltage, I guess. I, assuming this is some type of over voltage protector, I'm not sure. But you definitely want to make sure there's some protection on the back side of this so this plastic doesn't ground out on the metal case. So I'm going to put some electrical tape over that. And the other thing is, I'm running out of time, but this was the hard drive wasn't even screwed in. So it obviously has been worked on in the past. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but I'm going to take out that hard drive just to see what kind All right, of it is. The hard drive is a Western Digital WD400BB. I'd have to look up what disk space it is. It is flagged OK World is what it says. So, Alright, I'm going to put this all back together and I think we're good to go with the computer part of it. They must have jacked this up because of... Um, well, I'll come back and confirm that, but they probably try to wire this up so it would auto boot on power up when you can do that with the bio setting. So that's weird. I don't know. All right, so I was able to tidy this up a little bit. There was these um, these connectors right here that obviously probably were to power some fans originally. Maybe they removed the fans and put new fans in. I have no idea. I also um, soldered the uh, power on um, signal line for the was it JATX power supply or something ATX power supply so I soldered that wire tied it put some shrink wrap on it and let's see what else did I do that cleaned up the wires quite a bit and then I also wrapped that in the electrical tape which I think is a power safety board some type of over voltage protection and I put some uh, what do you call those um, Gosh damn it, the Velcro things. <laughs> Put a couple of those on there and uh, I'll keep it up there. Kind of out of the way. And there we go, just like that. All right, so that's, I think, all set. Now, the, the CD-ROM is not ejecting, but you can force eject it, so I'm going to leave it alone. Hopefully I won't need to use it, but if we ever have to rebuild or reboot from an ISO, hopefully the CD still actually reads discs or the DVD player. Otherwise, we're going to need a new one of those. And I'm not going to bother recapping the motherboard, although that probably is a good thing to do in general. There's quite a few caps in there, but I'm not worried about it. 
that's it um, for the power. I mean, for the PC part of it. All right, I'm not filming everything like usual, but I did uh, glue this header piece back in, and also used my little two-in-one stapler, and that thing's going to be in there now. I think it was pulling off probably because people were trying to pull on it this way, like with their hand pulling on it this way. <clears throat> but anyway, fix that. Got the guns removed. And another thing that's kind of interesting is I removed the shelf for the computer just to clean out the bottom and get some some of the parts that drop down there. But it's kind of cool that there's little rubber um, mounts to uh, stop you know the shaking and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, some cobwebs and stuff in the down there. But I'm gonna vacuum it all out and clean it up. Let's see what else. Remove the fan up there. Get that clean. And I did remove the uh, the monitor chassis. I'm gonna take that down into the basement. It's a VGA chassis. I gotta recap it and stuff. So that's it. Just um, I'm gonna take take off all the plastic parts, clean them, polish them the best I can. Uh, maybe even wax them. We'll see how much I get through. That's. Just showing some progress. All right, got the uh, plastic pieces off. I'm gonna leave this frame on, this metal frame that holds the speaker and the buttons on there. Got some sunflower seeds stuck in there, so it's good to take it all apart and kind of clean it up and just see what's hiding in the nooks and crannies. You never know what's gonna be hiding out in there. Okay, so I have the uh, monitor down in the basement here at my work area. And it says it's a KT2938. That's a kind of an interesting thing. I'm going to have to look that up a little bit more. But if you look on the chassis, I don't know if I covered this or not because it's like a week later. You can see it says it is a KT2182. But the back of the neck board, if you can see it there, if we can get in there. KT2938, and then over here it says KT2938. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think I think they just, the board is called, the board itself, the whole chassis together is a 2938. I'm not sure. There's been a couple posts on this. Um, there you see my tube number, A68. It's a 27-inch tube. But another thing I noticed, and I'm filming before I turn it on and stuff, is there supposed to be an on-screen display board that's plugged into this connection right there? CN502, I think it says. Yeah. And you can see those pins are completely broken off. So somebody just broke that crap out off of there. The caps actually look pretty good, and I'm glad it's actually powering up. <clears throat> I need to get a, an on-screen. Oh, actually, what is that? Is that a capacitor right there? No, okay. <laughs> I was like, uh, you don't see what I, I was looking at that right there. That's not a capacitor. That's part of the flyback. All right. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to power it up and see what we get. And I'm also probably going to have to order a, a remote board. I think I'm guessing a remote board. Um, I think Suzu Hap has something that looks like it would work. Whoops. For like 10 bucks. Um, I don't know. Kind of crazy. But I'm going to need to use um, my CM2125. So this is actually a good chance to actually use that. So that's going to be pretty cool. This is the manual I got right there. 2182F. If we look at it real quick. 2182F is a 21 inch flat screen. Flat tube. Um, and this is obviously a 27 inch, so I don't know, you know, if it works fine or not. I assume it does. It doesn't look like it's been swapped out, but, you know, you never know with these things. Um, 140 megahertz max bandwidth. Scanning frequency is 30 to 82K. It says, that I thought these were tri-syncs, but if you think about it, 1280 by 1024, like tri-sync, in, in other words, like, VGA 
an SVGA or something like that. Let's see. Um, it can do 640 by 480, 800 by 600, or 1024 by 768. I don't think it can do 1024, 10, 1280 by 1024. I don't think it can do that because it says horizontal frequency is 79. And the frequency scanning up over there is for horizontal is 82K. So I think this chart right here is just giving you the Visa um, VESA standards, I think is all it's giving you. Anyway, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check it out. I don't even know what you know the game runs on. I have to ch check that out too. All right, so that's that's what I'm gonna do is power it up, see if I can actually get an image on it down here in the basement. All right, it's been a while since I've actually used this. I had to take it down to plug it in, and I will link to one of the videos I did on using this. But I had to remove one of the chips. I think it was for the interlace. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, so while I have it out, I might, I've ordered some, I'll probably take the boards out and fix it, but I won't film that. Um, but I'll link back to my original test. But anyway, so what I did is I looked at the Visa or Vesa or whatever, however you pronounce that damn thing. Um, and I, I looked at what the settings were for band, you know, your resolution and the horizontal frequency and stuff like that. And just matched it up to my little the cheat sheet on the CM2125. And it has your different uh, VESA standards pre-configured. Now you can manually configure it as well. I've shown that. But um, I just ma mapped which ones of these match up to over here. And we're going to start with 640 by 480. So I just hit recall 28 enter. And you can see it puts the video polarity or the sync on um, positive. We're syncing on the green line and we have RGB are all enabled. And so that's all you have to do. We're just going to put raster image on there. That's our check there. It's kind of difficult to see with those that LCD screen. What are we doing? Drive signal. I don't think I have to do anything here. Yeah, this doesn't matter. <laughs> We're not using that part. It's been a while since I've used the damn thing. Alright. Let's plug this thing in. Alright. Hopefully it turns on. There it goes. I hear something. Yeah, see, we're all screwed up. <laughs> That's the raster. Let me get the staircase image on here. Let's see here. Dots. What does dots look like? Well, we have dots. I don't know if it, the coloring is all messed up. The degauss might be messed up. Um, definitely some weird crap going on there. Let's go color bars all right there we go we got some color bars you can see the discoloration down here at the bottom there there's that line going through the screen I don't know if that's a what kind of issue that is but we do have an image which is nice and it is auto syncing obviously to 640 so let's go ahead over here and do a recall 32 we'll go right up to the top that's 1024 by 768 recall where's my recall recall three two enter all right out of range doesn't like that <laughs> all right recall 31 30 to 40 kilohertz vertical, 40 to 160. Okay. So 1024 by 768. Let's go recall 30.
No, recall three zero enter eight hundred by six hundred. Hmm. Still says it's out of range. That's weird. Recall twenty nine. It's 800 by 600. Okay, there we go. So, I it's hard for me to film this while I'm showing you guys. So, I'm going to screw around with it a little bit. But that's 800 by 600. 37.9 kilohertz. Oh, because it said that the max was 40, 40 kilohertz on the uh, horizontal, didn't it? So yeah, this thing, this thing that maximum it can go is 800 by 600. Interesting. I wonder if it can go medium resolution. I might try my 25, my 25 hertz. I think I programmed that in somewhere. All right, I have the chassis off. I actually shocked my hand touching it under not not bad but I was you know I was pushing my hand up underneath this side and my finger must have touched like one of those transformers or a capacitor or something that still had a charge it like got me a little a little something there oh, it says I have almost no minutes left but anyway okay so I'm gonna do it's a a68 kvl 74 x video one 68 volt negative bias 6.3 on the heater voltage and I will come back and adjust that <laughs> right there okay just real quick I'll go through this with you guys just to show you the status of the tube G1 shorts looks good HK short obviously looks good cutoff low tracking okay okay cool. All right, looks like looks like the tube is pretty healthy. It's you know still warming up a little bit. You're, I should probably wait like five minutes or something. I don't know. All right, but that's rock solid. Good low tracking. Let's go to emissions. Full emissions. Nothing really needs to be done to this. Um, I would say I could reactivate the guns just since I have it hooked up, but. Nothing needs to be done to this. It's got full emissions, good high tracking, see emission life. Let's go here. The guns come back up. When you press this press for emission life, I've covered this before, but it basically decreases the heater voltage. So you need to let, when you come back and run another test, you kind of have to let it warm up a little bit. Emission looks good. And I'm pressing emission life, and it's not going down at all. So good news is the tube is perfectly fine. Um, I have no idea if that's the original yoke for it, um, but... We're good on the tube. Okay, I recapped this uh, chassis here, as you can see. And I also put a connector on CN502, which is the on-screen display board. I'm probably going to have to make my own board. I'll show that if I do it in this video. End up with a arcade parts and repair uh, cap kit. I did actually have an arcade shop cap kit, but it didn't come with the bipolar caps. It was missing some caps. Some of the caps were too big for the locations and stuff. I went and ended up ordering from Peter. Um, and I think there was one cap that might have been too big. Did I make a note of it? Yes, yeah, C113. There was one cap that I thought was too big of a um, diameter. 
But anyway, it definitely, and I also replaced the B plus. I usually don't do that, but I did it on this one. I don't know why. All right, so double checked everything twice. That's why you see it crossed off and checked. Reflowed where I needed to, and I'm always nervous about powering these things back up because who knows if I screwed something up. Um, but let me put the chassis in and let's right, fire it up. Got everything hooked up correctly. Power cords on. Got my CM2125 set up. You can't really see that. There we go. 800 by 637 kilohertz. Let's plug it in. I am always nervous when I do this because, you know, just one cap backwards or missing something soldering wise. Here we go. Okay, it came on, which was positive. <laughs> Nice. I don't notice. I got just the colors, but that crap down here below is gone. And up top, there's a little, some lines still there, but doesn't look as bad. So I think that cap kit actually uh, worked out. There's a little bit of discoloration in the corners here. I think that happens because of... I don't think it's degaussing issue. It could be, but I think it's because... Oh, you can't really see it, sorry. Right here, there's a little bit of purple. And a little bit of discoloration down here as well. In the lower lower corners. But these yolks have been known like to heat up and then like become fragile or something. But I'm, I don't know. This is probably as good as it's getting. So I need to adjust the color somehow. And potentially get an on-screen display board working. But the cap kit was a success. Okay, so I had some parts laying around. Actually, where's my little parts bag I wanted to show? I just had like this little parts bag where, it, you know, caps and stuff. And when I had um, replaced some tubes from some TV sets, I just pulled little interesting parts off of them that I think might come in handy and these are little momentary switches that I pulled off a TV that I did a tube swap from so and then I grabbed one of these little um, I, I don't know what you call them but you know boards that you solder stuff to I guess for experimenting and making up stuff can't think of what the name is and then printed out the schematic and grabbed some resistors because that's all it is it's basically different switches going through certain resistance with 5 volts being fed to this pin number 2 which is um, says key which goes to the um, like the processor chip on the board there's like basically a processor chip and that pin 2 goes like the pin 40 I'm not going to do the LED but I'm going to put in obviously a resistor on the 5 volt line and then that gets tied to the um, a shared key line, which goes to pin two. And the other side of the switches um, go to ground. And then there's a res resistor between the switches and the key line, whatever you want to call that, like maybe control line, if you will. So control line gets tied to five volts via R402. And then the switches get tied to the control line via these resistors here which puts out different voltage levels um, when you press the button the key line will see different voltage levels like if it sees 0.5 volts it'll know switch 404 or something like that is pressed and if it sees 1.5 volts and it knows this switch has been pressed and so on and so forth all right so i'm gonna do that real quick see if i can put this thing together all right i made quite a mess trying to find wires and everything but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think I got everything, turn the light on. I got everything pretty much in there. I just used the resistor legs to kind of build um, like traces or pathways. That's what it looks like underneath there. So it turned out pretty good, it's pretty easy. This is like down, up, exit and select I think yeah exit select I'll, I'll label it or something and I even put the little LED in there because I had one laying around so hopefully it works 
and we'll hook it up and see what we got. All right, I got it plugged in. I'm a little nervous here, but I did, if you can see that connector there, I did just ohm out ground. So I knew the ground, it was plugged in in the right direction because I don't have a the right connector on there to enforce directionality, but uh, just tested ground, the black wire that I wired up to the frame, chassis frame, and that's fine. I don't think I need to plug in the VGA to get the on-screen display, so I am going to just plug it in, and let's see if we get this LED to light. Man, I, I hope I wired it up correctly. Here we go. I'm going to plug it in. Oh, I hear some buzzing. The LED didn't light up, which is not good. No signal. I wonder why the LED didn't light up. No, nah, it's not working. Damn. No, oh, this little whining went away. But my LED is not lit. That sucks. And my on screen display is not working. Let me try hooking up a signal to it. Alright, so I got the actual LED. I took it out and just double checked everything and wired it back up and powered it on, and it seems to be the LED is working at least, or it's illuminated. Um, and then the directions say hook on to pin 21 of the IC chip, which is, if, I, if you guys can see in there, it's the one that says KT2938 monitors on. I just got to be careful, but it's right there, that one right there. So pin 21 is the last pin on the first row. And it says normally it should be at 5 volts, and it is at 0 0.3 volts. And I don't know why. But I think, I mean, obviously that's probably why my on-screen display is not working. Because it's at 0 0.3 volts. And so if I press any of these buttons, it's going to go all the way down to like 0 volts. Like that. And if it goes to zero volts, that actually doesn't do anything. So you're supposed to, I don't know, actually, let me see. Yeah, pressing X, <clears throat> sorry, pressing X, it should be 0 0.5, drop it to 0 0.5 volts. So it's like already at below 0.5 volts, you know what I mean? There's something, I don't know if it's, I don't know what's going on. Is it the chip? I'm going to have to post, see if anybody knows. But why isn't that pin 21 5 volts? It should be 5 volts, or I guess it should be getting pulled up to 5 volts somehow. I'm not sure. I have to look at the schematic. Alright, well, I still can't figure out what what's going on there, but... I did figure out the purity issues that I was getting. I think I mentioned it. The yoke had been, had kind of broken away from this, that part right there. It's monitors on. Like these little, whatever they used for glue, kind of just got hard and cracked and stuff. So the yoke kind of pulled away from the tube a little bit. I just pushed it up and used some um, glue and it does look much better in the corners. Like I had some corner issues going on there. Purity issues up here. And then some purity issues down there. But overall, I mean, it looks halfway decent. I can't get the on-screen display to work. But it's going to have to be good enough. There is like a weird wavy line going up. <laughs> like you can't really see it, I don't think. See on the camera? You can kind of see like this little whoo, whoo, like that. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it through the viewfinder. There's like a little line that's kind of... Oh, there it is on the white part too. I don't know what that's about. But I'm going to go ahead and put it into the cabinet. Um, 
it's recapped and everything. It's the best I'm going to be able to do. Okay, so I put the chassis um, and the tube in the mo in, in the game, and it definitely needs the on-screen display board to to get this to work. So, what's confusing is I don't know if pin 21 here, the key, it says it's for key, I guess. I don't know, but that's coming from the uh, on-screen display board. So, pin 2 right here. Pin 2. Uh, right there. Pin 2 is connected to pin 21. And it's supposed to be 5 volts, but it's not 5 volts. And I don't know if it's getting how it gets its 5 volts. If that because this is kind of like an input or an output. This is some type of microprocessor or com com programmable thing. So, I don't know. Um, but it does say, if you have an on-screen display failure, check C connection 801, which is... Is that 801? Yeah, that's 801 right there. Yeah, CN801. This is CN801. It says check that. Which is kind of interesting. I assume that's all there. And um, check pin 5 and pin 10 for these waveforms right here. Um, and if not, replace Q801. Basically this 801 chip which is a, what the hell is it? <clears throat> Can you see that? A Win, Welltrend WT68. Actually, I printed it out there. It's that right there. WT6802 monitor OSD with auto calibration. But I can't tell. It just doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? But anyway, whatever. Long story short, I'm rambling. I've done this before. I've powered on these chassis, basically on the bench, by putting the anode um, into a glass jar like that. Because I guess glass is it's not conductive or anything like that. But it, oh, it scares the crap out of me when I do this. Um, but I kind of need to do this so I can actually probe around more freely with a scope. Um... But if anybody has comments, because I'm always curious about how to do this. So I think I'm going to plug it in and give it a whirl. But I'm going to film it right here. To, and if I electrocute myself, it'll be on. It'll be live. Let's see. I'm actually scared <laughs> to do this. Yeah, see, I can hear the high voltage. It scares me. Um, but it's not obviously doing anything. Oh, I don't know. I don't like it. All right, I'm getting a little more comfortable here, uh, plugging it in with the high voltage here. So, I'm gonna plug it in. Still scares the crap out of me. But if we check the uh, 5 volts, I'm just going to show what I'm doing here on the connector. This is the connector to the remote board. 5 volts, we get 5 volts. And if I come to. Damn, I can barely see with the camera. Nothing on the key pin and nothing on the LED pin. As you can see there. Um, so, I don't know. I'm thinking the, the remote board is what gives the key pin the 5 volts, but I'm not sure. So, the other thing I want to do is, if I can, you can, you can kind of see here, I'm going to, Probe pin 5. Can you see it over here? Yeah, in the far right hand corner there. Let me see if I can. Like this. Alright. Pin 5. Let's see here. 
one, two, three, four is a uh, five volts analog, which you can see hopefully on my meter there. And then this is my signal on pin five, which is um, like VS or something. It's, I'm going to show you real quick. Basically it says OSD failure, pro pin 5 and pin 10, do you get the waveforms on the right? Pin 5 should be this V fly thing, and then pin 10 should be the horizontal. So let's do pin 10. This is uh, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. Let me um, adjust in my horizontal there. I mean, I don't. Hmm. Would it be that slow? I mean, it doesn't... It just looks like it's a steady 5 volts. I th I don't know. I'm thinking something that's not right. I'm going to look at Q802 on the neck board. I'm going to remove that and see if that's our problem. No idea. It just doesn't look right. All right, I'm back at this. It's been a couple of days, and I actually purchased a working um, extra monitor chassis that came with a remote board. And then I was comparing this remote board to the one I had, as well as got some clues from somebody on Clove. I'll link to the thread. Um, that I actually had this wired up wrong internally. So I had mistakenly wired some the, some of the switches to ground um, that I thought I, I don't know why, but anyway, wired it up incorrectly, but I think I have it correct now. So the other thing that on KLOV I brought up is powering these up on the bench. A couple people said that you could potentially, when you don't have it hooked up to a yoke, you can cause problems with the horizontal output or, or something like that um, that it could like end up stressing some circuits and blowing something so I'm not going to power it up on the bench yet I'm going to put my known working or was working anyway um, chassis back into the monitor and I'm going to try my remote board again and see what we get and then if not then I'll come back to troubleshooting it because I know we were looking at that chip on the neck board and not getting output on pin 10, but I don't know why that was so All right, so let me let me do that. Let me hook this up on into the tube All right, on the so bench. I got it powered on and There's my little LED one thing I noticed is that if I don't have a signal hooked up to it the on-screen menu won't work, but Now my menu works. I can bring it up. I can degauss it like that <laughs> so this is definitely working um, I don't know what was going on with my troubleshooting but obviously it looks like this is working so I'm going to try to readjust it to default recall hmm Okay, <laughs> maybe that, is that what the recall is? It's recalling to, to what? I figured there was some type of top corner, bottom corner, more adjust, vertical more adjust, language. Whoops. All right, I'm not gonna film it. Anyway, it's working. So now I can go put this in, in the damn 
game and, and adjust it with the, my little homemade thing here. So done screwing with it. I'm not even going to try to figure out why my meter wasn't working. Maybe it's because I didn't have it connected and that was the vertical fly or something. I don't know. Who knows? But I was going down a rat hole anyway. So monitor's working and I've figured out my thanks to Richard, I think 48 or something like that on Clove. He he just gave me a couple of clues and I had thought I wired it up correctly and then and I knew that something was not right with this and then he just I guess he made a couple comments that made me rethink rethink it and then I looked closer at it and I totally had it jacked up so but it's working now all right I have everything back together I did um, end up cleaning I know you can't see it in there but uh, you can't see it. it's too dark. too dark in the garage right now but I basically took off all the plastic especially where the guns went there was a lot of black marks cleaned it up and waxed it so that it would probably not get easily marked up cleaned everything the frame um, the only thing I didn't clean is really the guns for the most part, but let's go ahead and power it and watch the boot up sequence all the way through, hopefully. Yeah, no more CMOS, um, air, and then it goes right into the Linux and looks pretty good. Now, I'm a little bit confused still on the boot up process because it I think it does a disk checksum like every time but maybe that's because when you power it off I mean that's what it, normally a hard drive would do but it's kind of annoying I think it does it takes a while to boot up and I'm just going to let it run so you can see the, actually the full boot up process and if it's not right somebody can comment on this let me maybe just a little bit Yeah, I mean, see how long it's taking? I have both dongles in you. This Big Buck World, I think, is an upgrade to Big Buck Hunter Pro. Um, and so you need the Big Buck Hunter Pro uh, USB dongle in there, as well as the Big Buck Hunter World dongle in there. And see, at this point, you're supposed to be able to, like... It doesn't work. I mean, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I think you're supposed to... This is supposed to be like a, a gun setup thing, but it just comes on with that X, and that's it. It's really weird. And it just stays there for a while. But maybe there's a, some, a button you're supposed to press to start... The gun calibration so i think as you boot it up you're supposed to like recalibrate the guns as part of operator maintenance or i was reading the directions on it Now it says Big Buck Hunter World initializing. Again, I don't know why it should take so long. Could not open card reader port. Checking game files. Please stand by. And then it goes through all this checking game files. Oh, well, actually, that didn't take that long. It says game starting. Now it's undergoing system maintenance, it says. Just a very long boot process, and I don't know if that's normal or not. <laughs> I mean, this is four minutes. I'm just reading how long I've been recording. I 
thought you could adjust the volume with this little thing here. I don't know why it's not allowing it. Safari one probably the best. Now the I didn't, Let's go to the hunt. The gun is it's Welcome working pretty good, Ibex but adventure. I don't know all gun games. You know what I mean? It's like kind of whacked out. But you, to get the gun tracking perfect. Uh -huh. The one thing is with the girls, you can actually um, turn the girls off in the menu. One. You have two. Damn. That's a big round. Yeah, the game is pretty fun. You are a strong hunter. Hopefully this comes out okay on the video. You are the new hunter hero! Yeah, you can turn girls off on, in the <laughs> menu if you have like, you know, kids or something that you don't want. But I like it. That's one. Dang. That's a jumbo round. You are a great hunter. I'm not gonna play too much on this showing that it works. You are the new hunter hero. <laughs> That's it, guys. Big Buck Hunter. The I have the marquee, but it doesn't look you great. Are new hunter hero. It really needs a new marquee. I think Escape Pod can print those up, maybe, but you can also get them from um, Suzu Hap, I think. And I might, I don't know, the guns are a little, are obviously dirty. I probably need to clean them up a little bit. But anyway, that's it, guys. Big Buck Hunter. Working, going to a friend's house, fix it up for him. Cheers. <laughs>